French colleagues and listeners, here we are, another podcast, and I must say, with one of my favourites, Mr. Des Vertanis. Des, lovely to have you on board, sir. Well, lovely to join you as always, Chris. Always a pleasure. Yeah, and I must say, Des, you look absolutely fine and dandy in that picture of your first days within the industry at British Airways behind you. Hey, that's a while Chris. ago. That was that was what I wore for my interview. I was I, hoping they'll make me a pilot, but you see what happened. <laughs> the rest is history. Obviously, didn't have the intellect. No, 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 mate. You did well. You <laughs> captain, you captained many organisations on the right path, mate. Well done. There's listen. The Thank reason you. the reason we've invited you on is firstly huge, huge thanks for everything that you've done with regard to the ACHL conference and and the way it's matured. Um, but also the fact that um, you're handing over to to Henrik. So we're going to have a chat with Henrik as well later on, um, who's going to, you know, step into your your shoes. And I will be winding him up by saying what a big role he's got to fill. And I'll also be adding, you know, that it's understandable how nervous he's going to be when I remember your days when you took over from me. You were, you know, it must have been, must have been hard for you as well. <laughs> oh, Chris. You know, that I was so nervous. I was thinking, I how do I, you know continue and instill the sort of jocularity and and humor and great great sense of presence um that yeah, you yeah, magnified yeah. when i came came to the floor but uh i have to say you know you 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 did a sterling job in in getting that event up and running i have to say you know a huge credit and kudos to you yeah. but uh i think we've uh, we've moved this on now and you know we've we've made this a really go to event yeah, somebody said to me, somebody said to me in the bar that that um, it's almost like Darwin scale. So it's moved from caveman all the way through. And they said, you know, maybe the next one or two positions will really hit the nail on the head. So, yeah, I'm happy to be like, well, that. so it's no problem. But seriously, though, Des, great. And, and what a lovely event. huh? It, it really is. And I and when you think, you know, that we had these two um, years, you know, between 20 and 21 that, you uh, Sadly for us, you know, we had to try and provide some form of virtual conference uh, to appease uh, all the delegates around the world. And that was uh, that was very difficult for us. And uh, and I remember trying to, you know, interview with you, some of our speakers and try and cover the topics uh, that for us were critical at that time. But how wonderful you think that, you know, we followed up uh, again in Athens after we had a wonderful event, the first, yeah. you know, face to face yeah. last year. We were able to repeat that at a great venue and and to see the sheer number of uh, of executives attend this year, you know, 600 plus that uh, Eva are able to attract, not just to ACHL, but the complementing events, you know, such as ASA, you know, the cool chain, um, of course, uh, ULD Care. I, I think it's just marvellous. And, um, you know, there was some a little bit of pain, which I'm sure we'll talk through. But I think it's only right that when you look at a conference like us and the goals that you and I remember when we first discussed this, that we wanted this to be like no other conference. We wanted to be a goal setting conference. Uh, We wanted to showcase best in class. Uh, We wanted to be able to provide evidence of, you know, best practice and, you know, what uh, technology and and, uh, innovation had advanced um, in the hope that everybody else will uh, will right on the same train i think you know we we've, we've begun to achieve that yeah no no i agree with you and and you know the the word collaboration has been used so much um but i think it's nice now that you've got these almost like you know conference verticals collaborating and coming together because one person's audience gets benefits from from all the others as well and it and it just adds to the whole flavor and i think it was very 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 successful this year and i i know you know hopefully touch wood next year we might even have a you know a couple of extras you know maybe from from the trucking side of the business and also gse and and dare i say you know some more airports as well and i know you were talking earlier about fiata correct chris correct you know we we didn't uh change the name from air cargo ach air cargo handling to achl um without good reason uh, yeah. because we always knew that this event is very much a collaborative event right it's based on no one sector trying to work uh, on their own but really it's a cohesive effort from all the other partners in the supply chain and i i just believe that you know to your point if we can have 
the GSE sector. You know, we can start to see uh, the RFS. Certainly, they play such a huge part. Um, and if we get ACI, we, we you know, I think ACI should be fundamentally there. And I think Fiata should be representative. We have Brendan, who's represented IATA, Glyn before yeah. him. Um, so I think it's absolutely pivotal. If we get that, I think we'll achieve a great deal. And, yeah. you know, I, I honestly believe Henrik will be a, a, a masterful, masterful chairman. And he'll be able to uh, coerce these guys, for no, no doubt about that. Yeah, it's um, the styles, you know, because I, 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 I used to work with him on COAG, as you remember, we, you know, the original ones, and also then on ICH. And I always used to nickname him the legal counsel because whatever he does, <laughs> he does, he does right all the time. He never slips up. He's a star. He's a star. You know, funny. Uh, in that, it's in that so funny. Point. Yeah. <laughs> he does that. It's a very, very good uh, description of the man. You yeah. know, he's, he's such a man of detail, isn't he? And uh, when you think of that original COAG team, you know, of yourself and of Henrik, of Robert Fordry, um, uh, Bala, BJ, you know, uh, yeah. it was one hell of a team, you know, that uh, that got that uh, that side of the industry uh, up and running. Now, it was good times, good fun as well. But, um, yeah, it's interesting now. So we've moved from the caveman to the gentleman to the legal counsel. So it's really it's really taken off. Um, now, another thing I just want to ask you, though, is if you look back now over the years that we've been doing it, what what you know what have been the highlights for you? Um, you the highlights how, for me is how people are, are maturing with their thoughts, you know, hopefully a little bit more clarity and a little bit more focus. Well, if, if you recall from the very, very early days, um, I, I believe we had some good speakers. And if you remember, we used to have five five, six speakers on the stage, uh, and our moderators would try and get them to air their uh, their views. And, and they were very, very good views. But to, to me, we had um, a team of delegates in the audience that were more listeners, you know. Um, and whenever we came to um, putting questions to the floor, maybe there were one or two voices that could be heard. And and when you when you look at how the conference is involved now, I think the quality and no disrespect to the speakers that took part at that stage, because I was one of them. <laughs> so, but uh, but certainly uh, I'd like to think that now there's much more of a dialogue between the speakers and the audience, you know, because they're not just there to listen, but they're there to sometimes challenge uh, and express different views than than that that perhaps the moderator may be considering. So I quite like that. Um, and I also like the fact that, you know, we now have key takeaways that we set as goals for the industry. And and the second biggest change, I think, of course, is we've broadened uh, the uh, spectra of delegates now to include all elements from, uh, from the supply chain. You know, our panels include some very high level executives from... Uh, logistics, you know, from the airports, from uh, of inevitably the handling, uh, from the technology sector, and of course, the airlines. So I, I love that. I love the yeah. fact that we have a real broad base uh, audience these days. Yeah, no, I think it's great. And, and I got to say, um, like last year, last year, um, there was a young lad, and he did a great job this year. But one of the people who really, really participated, like you said, from the audience was was Kirsten Beck, Uwe's daughter. I mean, I, I was really impressed. She she really came up with some great points and put herself forward. So, you know, that's a good sign of, you know, some of the things that we've, we've been talking about as well. Um, but that was excellent. But also, well, you spoke about some some industry speakers, and I know you wanted to, to mention about Patrick Buckles, you know, from Beta Technology, um, how, how we've got to consider if we invite people of a certain stature and a certain importance because of their comments and their and their um, their differences, you know, we need to give them a really good platform. I, I agree. And, and and this is where, you know, I'd like to pay tribute to um, what I call the unsung heroes behind the event. You know, we we people tend to forget how much work it takes in order to put on a conference of this magnitude. And and when you look at the you know the days and days of dialogue between yourself, Parveen, myself, and of course Stan Rate, and you know Stan, who last year played a pivotal part in in some of the uh, moderating, 
uh, as he did uh, during the uh, COVID years. But, you know, he's uh, been pushing through his own company um, a strategy called Smart Airports. And his links through his particular audience has led to introducing people like Patrick Buckles. But when you think of this guy whose company, Beta Tech, are on the verge of introducing a very, very different type of aircraft that's going to be helping to drive and meet sustainability uh, objectives uh, of the future. And for him to take the time to come all the way from the yeah. States to the conference, I think is a tribute to the conference and, and its standing. And I, I believe it's deserving of a mention. And, and I think this is what this conference is beginning to do, Chris. It's it's beginning to draw these, these new innovative players. You know, we also had uh, Dronamics uh, yeah. in, you know, the form of Peter Hewitt uh, representing Svillen and uh, Constantine. And I think that's good because, you know, we've got the drones uh, which are going to play, you know, a vital role and are playing a vital role in, in, in the e-commerce deliveries of today. So... That shows you alongside, as I said, these other events, the ASA, which is growing as an association. Look at the executives that came yeah, for the yeah. ASA yeah. meeting, Everybody. right? Yeah. It, it's just, it's magnificent. And uh, as I say, it's a tribute uh, to where, you know, all the organizers, you know, Parveen specifically, uh, you know, and all of us have taken this event. Yeah, no, no, I, I agree with you. And and it was also nice to see Peter with a tear in his eye uh, at that video with the dynamic dynamic <laughs> when the when it took off. You know, with all the all the guys there, that was uh, no, that was good. That was very, very good. Very emotional for him, wasn't it? That was uh, lovely. It was yeah, lovely. The big, the big man, huh? Um, yeah. So um, yeah. So right. Um, I mean, it's developed. It's 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 done very very well. And and a good shout out there for Patrick. Um, but now there's, I think, next year's one. Um, you know, some of the things that we spoke about when we were there and afterwards with a, a little bit of a different organisational structure and and having the afternoons free for networking so that there's a real, um, you know, a real e easy way to do what is necessary without feeling guilty or or not being there and missing out on some of these key, key and specific speakers. And also, I think we should have fewer but better um, panels and, and topics so that people can make a concentrated effort to attend and really get the benefit from it. So I think it's well well said. You know, firstly, I didn't answer your last um, uh, soundbite, which is a vital one, you know, about how the future generations are now emerging in the industry, you know, from, uh, from their parents uh, of yesteryear. And it was lovely, lovely to see Uwe's daughter. You know, she played uh, and she attended all the conferences, yeah, always yeah. had a comment or two, and was also a speaker herself, you know. Yeah. And when you think of the one of the goals of how to attract talent to the industry and to see some of that talent now beginning to emerge, isn't it wonderful, you know? And let's hope, you know, that can escalate um, so we see a lot more uh, in the years to come. But to your point, when you provide a conference that has so much going for it, if you are a delegate and your company has to pay those um, those vital dollars, pounds, you know, euros, then you've got to get best value for the time you're going to spend there. And if you've got a conflict between wanting to go to a meeting with the Cool Chain or with the ULDK or ASA, plus you want to listen to a conference, plus go to the exhibit so you can, you know, do your networking. You really are having to manage your time. And, and, and of course, for many, many, many of our delegates, there was, that was a big challenge. Yeah. And uh, for us to run a conference a whole day, I think is asking uh, a little too much. So I, I believe, you know, um, in the, for the benefit of hindsight, going forward, I think that's a very good call that we've all been discussing. And I think Henrik will, will certainly gain huge advantage from that. If we can tailor the conferences themselves to be morning events um, and leave the afternoon free for the delegates to go and do what they need to do in terms of their other uh, objectives, I think that will they'll pay uh, huge dividends. Yeah, yeah. And it also helps with the logistics of having, you know, fewer panels, fewer speakers, and we can mix it around a little bit, you know, so it's uh, it's not all the same. So I think that's going to be 
Great right. opportunity. Yeah. And then you're going to have a few common threads that, you know, they can be there because it'll cover every single one of the, the verticals that are there in attendance. Exactly, exactly. And, you know, you, you're right in the sense that there were one or two which probably had um, replicating uh, agendas, if you like, within the discussion. Um, and it um, it leaves that uh, floor open now to be able to bring these very, very specific topics, bring the experts um, and those that we believe can set great examples um, to attend and then give them the audience um, to be able to get the benefit uh, yeah. of their wisdom. So I, I, I think it's going to be magnificent um, if we can achieve that type of agenda going forward. Yeah. And what we've got to do as well, we've got to put out there, you know, the the targets and objectives from this one so that people are aware of what's happening and what the uh, what the points are. So that will be one of the first things that I'm sure you'll be handing over to Henrik and saying, Henrik, if anything, you've got to make sure that these are deliverable um, and that they are delivered, you know, in time for the next conference. Correct. And we'll we'll circulate that to to everybody that was there. The only reason we weren't able to do that uh, and it was no uh, fault of uh, of the organizers but parvin was left and eva were left with no choice but to have the event because of a previous commitment by the venue yeah. uh, to take a wednesday thursday friday now never right. never never does any event uh finish on a friday because yeah. for obvious reasons and you know we had no choice but to have those three days so it did make it very very difficult for the speakers and for the delegates uh, on the last day, which uh, because of the sheer number in the end, uh, we didn't feel it was worthwhile sharing the objectives. But uh, I'm pulling that together and I'll make sure that uh, Henrik's got that objective uh, in which to achieve when he when he opens his uh, chapter next year. Yeah, no, no, exactly. It does. And, and as far yeah, do as you, you, you know, you, you mentioned the way things have changed and, you know, at the end of the day, the conference is, you know, you've got a business element and it's there for business, obviously, but there has to be also a little bit of fun and, and enjoyment so that people feel, you know, always comfortable and always enjoy what's going on. And I think sometimes, you know, it's good to make everybody appreciate that, you know, if you can laugh together, you're going to be a lot more successful together. And, you know, sometimes uh, sometimes that little joviality is is missing in, in, in certain areas. But isn't that, isn't that, uh, part of the recipe of what makes uh, our industry so unique, Chris, because, you know, we, we we talk about it being a people industry. It's remaining a people industry. Uh, the friends that you make, the reason they become friends is, you know, you work hard during the day. No question about that. But if you have the chance to socialize and when you have a vehicle like the uh, gala evening that was provided for yeah. our delegates, what a wonderful, what a wonderful, wonderful stage in which to, you know, to solidify that friend, that new friend, you know, or to yeah. catch up with an old friend. Because you can't do it during the day because they're going to one event and you're going to the other. So other than perhaps a quick morning breakfast, you've got no chance. But that evening, I believe, gives you a tremendous opportunity to catch up and to have a great deal of fun. Lots of laughter. It was, it was a splendid, splendid uh, evening, I thought. Yeah, no, it's an important ingredient as well, like you said, because everybody's going this way and that way, and and, and you know all you end up doing is like you know ships in the night. You keep passing each other without yeah. without being able to get into any detail or any you know any any closeness. So that that's that's a good one. Now, there's if I was to say to you or to ask you, you know, what was your most memorable experience of your involvement? What what would it be? What would what what would you say to that? Um. I don't know, Chris. I, I don't know if I can pick one specific one. I, uh, I I'd like to think, you know, I'll probably go back to one of the earlier, um, the earlier events when you know when you're standing on stage and uh, and at that time where you know perhaps the technology hasn't quite caught up to what it is today. You know, <laughs> when we've either got mics, you know, plugged into us, or we've got our own uh, uh, handheld mics, and we're beginning to talk. And all of a sudden, two out of the three aren't working. And we're, we're having to pass the baton all along the line of speakers, you know. And I'm standing at a podium. And then in the end, and I remember one occasion, you had to do that. And you did it so admirably where you said, I'll just walk the floor. <laughs> and you came down into the audience so everybody could hear you. 
And and I think you know that that tends to make you recall uh, the sort of the fun part of uh, of the event. But you know, to to the credit of all our industry delegates, you know, they take everything that happens, you know, in their stride. You know, and there's no criticism. They don't yeah. worry about that. They don't even bring it up to you. But yeah. as an you know, as somebody who's chairing it or somebody who's moderating, I tell you, it it. Uh, it throws you off spec quite quite frequently. <laughs> yeah, no, there was a, you just reminded me now. I remember in, in Paris when when everything the, everything went down, the mics, everything, and the guys at the back just went. They went like that, and it was about half an hour. So you got to entertain people. But the other one I remember was um, I had one of those fancy mics, you know, at the very beginning, and the guy he went to the toilet when I finished, so he didn't turn yeah. it off. And I went outside, Harvey, and said, do us a favour. Can you get these people to come in? And I, and I used some terms which possibly I, I shouldn't have used at the time. And, of course, not realising everybody could still hear it in the uh, in, in, in the auditorium. So it was a bit of a laugh when I came back in. Uh, good times, Des. Yeah, they were. They were. And, uh, of course, it's it's so, so different now. But, but um, no, I think, you know, um, to me, it's uh, – I just love the fact that uh, – uh, that we have we have a bit of fun we have a bit of fun you know even during the debates and it's yeah. it's lovely you know when you when you think we have um for the delegates now you know instead of taking a handheld you have this box that you oh, can yeah, physically yeah, yeah, yeah. throw like a rugby yeah. ball and i remember the first time we used that was last year right and um i'm not sure who threw one to somebody who felt they could catch and they <laughs> And they missed it, and they hit another delegate on the head who happened to be on his mobile phone. And if ever that was apt, yeah. that to me was just perfect yeah. theatre. And um, and I think it sort of made him realise that he should be paying attention exactly. you know, uh, than being on his mobile. But uh, that's the type of uh, sort of you know little little events that uh, I, I I always remember at uh, at, at uh, ACHL. Yeah, no, it was brilliant, Des, and and uh, always, always a pleasure watching you, working with you, and listening to you, and learning from you. And um, look forward to seeing you again next year. And we'll both have to give Henrik a little bit of stick and pull his leg a little as well. So, yeah, we won't make it too comfortable for yeah. you. <laughs> Can't do that. Can't do that. Bless him. Exactly. All right, Des. Thanks very. It's been very a pleasure. Good. Thanks, Chris. Thank you very Thank much you. indeed. And it's been lovely joining you as always, my friend. Thank you.